Hey everybody, Mandy here, and let me ask a question to start off the video. Why do you think Ding Romper has gotten so popular in 2020? If I had to guess, a lot of answers out there are that it's the 10 year anniversary this year, and yes, I must admit, it's done great wonders for the Ding Romper series to help it more popular in 2020. However, I think there's a reason here that some people just don't see. Well, I do see some people bring it up, but not a lot, so I'm going to discuss it. I'll be explaining it in more detail in this video, but tell me in the comments how you got into the Ding and Rumpa series, as I'm curious to see what everybody's experience is and how they got into the fandom. Oh yeah, by the way, we're a Ding and Rumpa channel over here. Hit the subscribe button for more Ding and Rumpa content. Thank you so much, and let's get into the video. But anyways, what is this reason? Well, it's Ross Geller. Well, it's YouTubers. A lot of big YouTubers have been playing Ding and Romper recently, and as a Ding and Romper YouTuber myself, I've noticed that a lot of people within my comments talk about how when they first got into Ding and Romper, it's from a Let's Player or a Twitch streamer or just watching somebody play it. I mean, this is kind of the exact same thing that happened with Five Nights at Freddy's when that first came out. It mainly got popular due to people watching like uh, people like Markiplier or Jacksepticeye or whoever. And because of that, it got a lot of people intrigued within Five Nights at Freddy's, and that's what kept it going for so long. However, because of what's happening with this, I guarantee you that a lot of FNAF fans haven't played the games at all, which is exactly what's happening with Ding Rampa right now. Even though I believe that experiencing these games by playing them is a lot better than watching, I still think you can have a lot of enjoyment just by watching someone play the games, as the characters are probably the most important things to the series. And when you talk to people in the fandom, I mean, a lot of people do enjoy the setting, the killing game, etc. But the majority of people are invested in the characters more than anything. The first game's prologue is really good at setting this up for the characters, as in the later games you have to kind of run around the environment in order to find characters to talk to. However, in the first game you meet all the characters in the exact same room, you just go one by one. In my opinion, this helps the player to meet all the characters as soon as possible, so that way it helps people find some kind of attachment to them, and in a way that helps them convince them to continue watching or continue playing on to see what happens to their favourite characters. Obviously everybody's different, and I'm sure people just saw the funny haha -ha, bear go kill and called it a day, but it's this prologue that really helps Let's Players audience get interested if they've never seen Ding Rumpa before, and because of that their audience either goes off on their own to watch the rest of it, or experience it with the Let's Player. Like I said earlier, it's like FNAF because of the people playing, but for a completely different reason. People are there for the jump scares, and yes, there are some people who did branch out and go more into the story, but it's mostly people are there for jump scares. Oh shit! What the fuck, man? God! Holy shit, why are you running to the door, you- When people react to the deaths also, it's if that character means a lot to you or not. So you want to see how your favourite Let's Player will react to it. While with the FNAF audience, they didn't really get invested because they're just seeing a couple people jump in their chair. I just wanted to explain further on the YouTubers thing, as we have big YouTubers like Nico B, I Breezy, Bleezy, uh, Luca Jin, John Wolf, Cinnamon Toast Ken, and John Awesome. I, I probably said some wrong. Oh, oh there's also Razbowski, Rusbowski, but these tiles and thumbnails. Uh, no, please stop. Just remember, these are some amazing content creators. But I'm listing them off because I'm now going to compare them to the people who have played Ding Romper Blind in 2020. Bujin, Bijin, I bro, I don't know how to say your name. Bijin Mike, Lawrence Side, <laughs> Lawrence Side. I has cupcakes, Cub Scouts, Jazzy Guns, Porke. I, fuck man, I don't know how to say your name. Notice how I've list off less people than the ones in 2019. Nothing against that, obviously, and you know, like I said, go support all these creators. But these are the people who have played Dinger Romper in 2020. They just have way more subs than everybody else. Like here, like a six million sub channel playing Ding Romper. In my opinion, I think that's huge for the community. And hell, I recorded this like weeks before Game Grumps started playing Ding Romper, and now they're playing it. Game Grumps are playing Ding Romper. I've been a big fan of Game Grumps, and I've been a big fan of Ding Romper for years now. I would have never expected them to be playing Ding Romper. I just think that's absolutely insane. 
and it just shows how far the community and how far the fandoms come. As somebody who's a Ding Romper YouTuber and from the Ding Romper community, I can safely say that I'm really happy all these people are playing and noticing Ding Romper. As many of you out there already know, 2018 and 2019 were kind of a slow point for the community, as nothing really happened. And honestly, 2020 has just been a great year for Ding and Rampa. Yes, I know, the announcements haven't been that good so far and they got pushed back to 2021. However, 2018 and 2019 were just nothing. So I'm glad 2020's been some great stuff for the community. And this is my favourite series of all time. Like, it just beats everything and I'm so happy it's being appreciated by all these amazing content creators out there. So honestly, if any of you out there are watching this video, which I doubt, but if any of you out there are watching this video, thank you so much for playing this really, really stupid game. However, that's basically the main reason why Dingrump has gone popular in 2020. Like I said in the comments, leave down below how you got into Dingrump, because I'm pretty sure this is the majority of the reason. However, now it's time for me to say a stupid joke, then end the video. So, um, here I guess.